Lately, I've been greatly inspired by a wonderful book entitled A History in English Words by Owen Barfield. Of the English language, Barfield writes, that in our language alone, not to speak of its many companions, the past history of humanity is spread out in an imperishable map, just as the history of the mineral earth lies embedded in the layers of its outer crust. Language has preserved for us the inner living history of our soul. It reveals the evolution of consciousness. In this spirit, um, I would like to begin a little series called The Soul of Words, in which I take the Oxford English Dictionary, which I have before me, and pick a word and contemplate that word so as to try to get a sense of its living interiority, its life, its soul, um, and the kind of consciousness that birthed, that gave birth to that word. Um, the Oxford English Dictionary is, of course, a compendium of definitions, and thus I felt like a good place to start was with the word definition. A definition is a formal statement of the exact meaning of a word, an exact description of the nature, scope, or meaning of something. Etymologically, with this word definition, it's related to other words like finitude or infinity or the infinite, the infinite being the unbounded and the finite uh, being the bounded or the limited. Uh, we also have like the idea of the finish line in a race. So a group of people are running in a race and the finish line is the limit, the end or the bound of that race, the finish, from the Latin root finis, which just means end. So a finite thing is a thing that has an end. Um, so a mortal creature, like a human being, has an end, has death, uh, is limited in that sense. Um, and Okay, so, so, so definition, an exact statement about the meaning of a word. There's something in this definition that is connected to the idea of a boundary, a limit. What's helpful here for me in thinking about these things is the old um, Pythagorean duality between the Epiron and Peres. These were the two metaphysical principles of the Pythagoreans, Apiron and Peres, which basically are the infinite and the, the finite, the boundless and the bounded. So we might first of all reflect about this definition thing that Okay, so it's giving like an exact meaning of a word. It's giving us a bounded way of like, if we say like, oh, what does the word tree mean? Then we can like go to the dictionary. We've got a bounded, finite statement of what what that word means. Okay, well, it's um, exact, precise, bounded. And it might strike us though that... Um, meaning, the meaning of words and the meaning conveyed by words um, has a kind of superabundant, uh, ebullient quality. Um, it, they can overflow in meaning, really. I mean, really, what does love mean? What does God mean? Truth, beauty. Uh, 
you know like these these big words there are there are big important words that we use in our language which seem to have such a superabundance such a plenitude of meaning that it kind of can feel silly to define them in this way to say to 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 take that um, um boundlessness that infinitude you know say of meaning uh conveyed by that word and to then say well no it's not that and I kind of temper it and like bring it back and box it and put it into a nice clear thing. Indeed, you know, this is one of the, um, um, how can I say, like one of the tensions at play in contemporary philosophy, the so-called analytic school of philosophy, which seeks um, precision, exactitude, um, precision and exactitude in terms of our definitions, in terms of how we are precisely using language. And I think there's a virtue in that to some degree, but I also think there's a limitation in that because I, as the word means, as the word definition means, it is to limit meaning. Um, the continental school, uh, phenomenological uh, existential traditions within philosophy um, are less quick to do that and are more open to the varied um, shades of meaning and indeed, you know, in, in some sense, the ineffability of certain uh, notions of certain ideas. And so there is a tension there within the trends of contemporary philosophy. And yeah, perhaps that can conclude the little reflection on the word definition. Um, um, perhaps there's more, so like to define is to limit. And so, like, the idea with that, too, is that, like, for that to be true, there has to be a kind of apiron, a boundlessness uh, first in order to limit. You know, what is being limited when we define words? That's kind of an interesting thing to reflect on. You know, so like if a word is bounding meaning, uh, it kind of implies that meaning is prior to the word. Indeed, the uh, efflux of meaning, the like the 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 the, the, the um, overflow of meaning is uh, anterior. It's like primary uh, to like like before the definition, the bounding, the prescription of a word in a dictionary sense. Like a dictionary is a kind of um, limiting of language so that we can have a reference point, so that we can formally convey the language. Um, so, I mean, it has its uses, this formal system of uh, limitation but it is a limitation um it can be constructive in dialogue to define our terms for example because like otherwise there's just like this flow of meaning i use the word in this way and it means this you're using the word in that way and it means that maybe we talk past each other maybe we don't really know what we're discussing without some level of definition, some level of boundary, sort of tempering that. But I think it's suggestive and it's interesting that actually infinity in the old 
uh, Pythagorean sense, the apiron, the, the, the boundless, okay, the unbounded, is first. Like, first there is meaning. Like, first there is... Um, yeah, meaning unbounded, related to this, to that, to all things, to having this grand complexity and grand interrelation. Um, even when I'm talking about the word definition, we can see how definition is related to finish, finishing, finish, to finish a project is to put a line uh, around that project is to end that project. It is to temper the epiron. Um, there's a Da Vinci quote which I love, which is that art is never uh, finished; it's only abandoned. Which kind of gestures towards this thought that the human spirit has a quality of a pyron to it it has a kind of infinite desire uh as its very texture um and then so if i ask you like oh how do you feel or like um what do you think about god what do you think about love what do you think about these things how do you even like start to talk about that stuff you know like immediately the intuition that um that comes with a question like that is that it's like you're going to be limiting it by using words yeah by defining it you are limiting it you are bounding it now i don't know if i mean this to be like a polemic against the very idea of definition and limit, although I suppose it might be coming across that way. Yeah. I, I think it can be limiting <laughs> to uh, raise definition into some some god, you know. Um, and it might be much more liberating to feel into the soul of this word definition finitude limitedness boundedness and say so, yeah like it's important to define things indeed um you could say that the cosmos itself um is a kind of definition it's a kind of bounding into a harmonic order the unbounded uh this is the Greek conception of the demiurge. Like, so in a sense, like boundary limit is really important. And that's why the twin metaphysical principles for the Pythagoreans are the infinite and the finite. But I just wanted to say, like, in the context of language and meaning, like, it seems true to me that, like, first there is an interior superabundance plenitude of meaning, unbounded meaning. And perhaps this is what um, we intuit, you know, this is what our intuition can see, can feel immediately. And then we can, to degrees, put words on that we can shape that we can communicate that and this is why uh, uh an interesting thought with this is that the the chakra of the um of the throat is below the chakra of the the third eye the intuitive eye that in a sense um language is below intuition in that way um yeah, that we intuit unbounded, superabundant meaning, and that through words and language, we limit that, we bound that. 
Anyway, this uh, video is a bit of an experiment. I'd like to um, continue doing this because, like, I really love language. Like, I think language is such a beautiful thing. And um, Barfield's whole thought is that poesis, uh, like making, is, the, the, the poet that um, is somehow in tune with the soul of language in an important way. The poet is connected to the essence of language. Okay. And um, yeah, I really love that thought. I really love, I'm really inspired by what Barfield has to say. And so I'd love to uh, sort of explore these themes more and etymology in general really interests me because immediately with etymology you see you get into like the roots of words you see that words are um living things in a way they they have a soul and i think really one of the great issues um one of the great issues sort of plaguing contemporary discourse we could say and maybe it's a perennial issue um is that shades of meaning sort of like um gather over the core the, the the core essence they're like as like a shell over them through time so like these layers of meaning become a cre a, like bound to the word over time through history through the different ways the word is used and that can then put us in a very ambiguous uh, ambivalent um uh, relationship to that word god being a huge one um you know god what is god um is the basic theological question and uh, you know i can turn to the oxford english dictionary to give that give, give a go with that right and uh, maybe in another video we will but um but, but, but surely um <laughs> there's going to be a futility in that to some degree a kind of reduction uh in that sort of trying to define such a expansive thing um it's not just god of course there's lots of words that mean a lot more than can than we can say like we uh, that have a meaning beyond a definition somehow and I think it's important to be sensitive to that and to 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 sort of go with that, to like feel into that. And I think that is what the poet does essentially is is that moving in to the life and soul of language. Um um uh get getting getting rid of all of these accretions um which time has sort of stuck to the word and going deep into its essence into its soul anyway that's my uh hope for this little series um the the soul of words, I'm going to call it. And that was uh, the first video on the word definition. So thanks for, thanks for listening.